Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design That. Today we are going to be building our own DIY fog buster for my CNC. Thank you to PCBWay, who are the sponsors of today's video. If you're looking for anything to do with making or DIY, PCBWay have got you covered. They offer quick turnaround PCB prototyping, flexible PCB manufacturing, assembly, and they accept low volume orders. They also currently have some amazing Christmas offers on their store with up to 50% off of 3D printing and CNC machining. Check out PCBWay.com today. Now I started off with pretty much the most basic version of a fog buster. Uh, you've probably seen it on Amazon. It's just basically a, a block like this with one valve on it and it's got a lock line and the nozzle at the end. I quickly discovered that they weren't really good because you only have one valve and that will just adjust the air and the coolant delivery. So you can't really fine tune it with that. Um, it's very difficult to get the mixture of the coolant and the air mixed well, so that then you're not just chucking out loads of coolant. The next type of fog buster that I used was pretty much the same. It had a lock line coming out of it, but it had two valves on it. And this allowed you to adjust the air and also the coolant flow. This was better than just having one valve to control both air and coolant. But because it relied on the Venturi effect to suck the coolant along the tube and out of the nozzle, it was very difficult to get a consistent flow with these type of non-pressurized coolant systems. Also just the position of these two valves, they're kind of like nowhere near in line with one another. Uh, and it just makes the delivery of the coolant not very consistent. Really all I'm looking for in these type of coolant systems, especially in MQL, which is minimum quantity lubrication, um, is you are literally just looking to spurt out a tiny bit of coolant onto the end mill. You don't need to coat the entire material in, in coolant, which you might have seen in some of my other videos where I'm trying to tweak the, the airflow and the coolant flow. Uh, really, all you want is just a little peppering of coolant onto the end mill. Basically, all that it needs to do is it coats the end mill in, in, the, in the lubricant, which helps to reduce the friction and the heat build up. Because you're only kind of putting a little tiny bit onto the end mill, it will evaporate really quickly the water that is in it, and that helps to dissipate the heat from it. When you're using these type of MQL systems, the kind of the surrounding area should really be dry and that will help with making sure that your chips don't just clog up in the area that you're machining. And you might have seen it in some of my previous videos where because I'm using so much coolant and so much air, it's just kind of clogging up in the pockets that I'm machining and I don't have enough airflow to actually push out the chips because they're all just getting soaked and they're all just getting clogged up together. So it's because of those issues that I finally decided to try and build my own fog buster. You can buy the fog buster, it is very highly rated. It is about 200 to 300 euros. So I wanted to try and build my own. And today that is what I'm going to show you. Looking at the Fogbuster schematics, you can see that actually it's, it's quite a simple setup. Um, they've just got one direct line from the air supply going out to the nozzle and they've just got a needle valve that essentially just sits on top of that airflow. So the, the uh, coolant is just essentially dropping down into the airflow and it's getting taken out uh, through the nozzle. So what I did first of all was I, I tested a prototype. You can see the 3D model that I created. The issue that I was having with uh, my first 3D printed model was that it was spurting. And I think it was due to the fact that basically I designed it with chambers in the in, the, in this manifold. And I think it was resulting in the uh, the coolant from just pulling up. And once it got to a certain level, it would reach the, the airflow line and it would spurt out. I tweaked the design and I just made it more streamlined. I basically just uh, cut away the chambers and I just made it so really there was nowhere else for the coolant or the air to go. I just made sure that it was going straight through uh, and coming out of the nozzle. Making the, the flow for the air and the coolant, making it more streamlined, really did help with those issues. Tested it, got a really nice consistent flow of droplets. And because the setup uses a pressurized container to hold the coolant, I don't have to rely on the airflow and the Venturi effect to make sure that I'm getting a good consistent delivery of coolant because it's, it's pressurized. So it's always gonna be a constant flow into this uh, manifold here. Now I thought I was gonna be able to just stick with a 3D printed option. Problem is though is that it's quite porous. Once you start getting up to like one or two bars of pressure it starts to bubble and 
yeah, 3D printed is not really the way to go if you want something to be watertight. So I machined it out of aluminium. It's quite an easy thing to make. You just need three holes uh, for, the, for the threaded valves. The only difficulty in this was drilling a two millimeter deep hole. And um, basically I just took my time. <laughs> First time I did it, I ended up snapping the drill bit. Uh, second time, yeah, I was just much more cautious, brushing off the drill bit every single few millimeters, lifting it out, making sure that the hole was filled up with, with coolant. And yeah, it was fine after that. Now you wanna make sure that you use Teflon tape or, or silicone uh, when you are putting on the valves onto the manifold. The same goes with the 3D printed nozzle part. I made sure that I loaded that up with a uh, Teflon tape as well. The nozzle, I used a uh, two millimeter brass tube. I was able to source this from a model making shop. This has got a inner diameter of 1.1 millimeters. So it's just gonna let out a tiny amount of liquid, which is what I wanted for this. This just push fits into the 3D printed nozzle section and then I just sealed it up with some super glue. Now I should have really have designed the uh, the aluminium block to have space for a for a threaded hole but I didn't um, so that means that I had to 3D print a casing to hold it. Uh, so that's what you can see here. It kind of makes it a little bit big and chunky I know but it does the job. And then I've got a 3D printed bracket that attaches to the uh, to the spindle mount. And then I've just got one of these Nograms. It's not actually a Nogram, it's just a it's like a cheap, I think it's New Ear is the is the brand. And this just allows you to really put it in any position. Once you lock it down, it isn't going anywhere. The pressurized container is just a cheap water filter container. You can pick these up for very cheap. I think this was like 13 pound for this and I think it holds a litre of, of liquid. I've just got the appropriate uh, brass fittings and I've got quick lock connectors. I've got one eight millimeters for the airflow and I've got a four millimeter for the coolant. And how it works is I've got one line coming from my compressor and then I've got a wire splitter, and one of those splits will go straight into the air supply of the fog buster. The other line goes into the water filter container. It pressurizes it, and it forces the coolant out through the line and into the fog buster. And lastly, I just 3D printed some clips to just keep it all nice and neat and tidy, and I've just mounted the, uh, the water filter in the CNC enclosure that I built. And I'm just gonna show you some test cuts. Uh, I'll also show you some up close shots of the coolant. It works really nicely. I don't get any fog, which I did used to get. This just puts out nice droplets. So it means that, you know, after a long operation, I'm not opening the doors to my enclosure and I'm breathing in a load of fog and that's what these fog busters are meant to do. So all in all, I think I have probably spent less than $50 making this. I think the most expensive part was probably the water filter bottle and as I said you know you can get them for pretty cheap. It doesn't look as slick as a fog buster but it certainly does do the job that I need it to do. For the price can't really complain. If you've got any improvements or suggestions please put them in the comments below. I will put the 3D files up on Thingiverse um, if anyone wants to just take a look and kind of see how I made it. If you want to build it yourself and you need any help let me know in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe and I will catch you all later.